So I'm going to try and give you a little bit of background about Tennessee Williams, the man and the writer. Uh, talk about the development of the play uh, from its beginnings to uh, the form in which you see it on stage now. Uh, talk a, bit, uh, a little bit about the overall structure of the play. The story of how a place of stone blossomed to become a play called Cat in a Hot Tin Roof is a wonderful journey through a writer's lonely struggle, through the commercial pressures of Broadway, through the eventual exoneration of a writer. That was quickly followed up two years later by A Streetcar Named Desire, which, as you can imagine, had a tremendous impact that year. I mean, it won his first Pulitzer Prize. Williams, in his memoirs, writes, it's hard enough for me to write what I want to write without me trying to write what you say they want me to write, and which I don't want to write. <laughs> so this is the state of mind in which Tennessee Williams was in in the fall of 1953 as he started writing, uh, hoping to redeem himself. So already Tennessee was working with these seeds of a family in a southern plantation about to rip apart at the seams. But the journey that he took with this initial story idea to what it is today had a lot to do with the pressures of working in the theater, as you can probably imagine. In October 54, uh, Kazan became involved with the script and immediately began pressing for rewrites. At this point, you know, Williams, having felt the pressure of having three of his plays do not so well at the box office, really wanted to keep Kazan uh, interested in this play, and so he made the changes, even though he felt that they weren't quite going after what he wanted to do. And by the time the production opened on Broadway in 1955, the play was a very different beast than what he had started with. Uh, nevertheless, it was an incredible success. Uh, it ran for something like 600 performances, I believe. Uh, ran almost a, a little over a year uh, and garnered his second Pulitzer Prize. So just to give you an idea of how different these three versions are, I'm, I give you here just a little snippet of the end. But regardless of the beauty of the structure, which, you know, for, for dramaturgs, for directors, you know, it's, it's something that, that we find uh, uh, really fascinating. What is most important and what we carry away is not the plot, but the coherence of its unforgettable characters. Uh, so Big Daddy, the dying father, is about to hand over his kingdom to one of his sons. He hasn't quite decided whom, but you know, you have his defeated son, who is his favorite. The tight structure of it you know, provides that intense focus that Williams called that cloudy, flickering, evanescent, fiercely charged interplay of live human beings in the thundercloud of a common crisis. Williams's cat is highly romantic, but taut, but very tough at the same time. It's prose capable of elevated flights, yet remaining tethered to reality and believability. And I mean, what is cat really about? I mean, what topics, what themes is Williams trying to tackle? Nothing short of the truth. The truth of human experience, the truth of family relationships, uh, which is certainly no small topic to try and tackle in a three-hour play.